What is up, folks? This is Pristin Gaming. We are back with another episode of 7 Days to Die Mods Weekly, the show where we'll help you figure out what mods are good for you. And this week, as you can see here, we have a cool week ahead of us. We're going to cover a couple cool POIs and then some smaller supporting mods. But before we jump into anything, I want to say thank you guys for all the support since I've come back. It's meant the world to me. And also, I hope everybody had a fantastic holiday and a fantastic New Year's. I know I, I did. I'm probably going to be pretty hungover. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys won't have too bad a hangover to bring in the New Year with. But we're going to go ahead and jump into the mods now. And this first mod is the Survivor Camps Pack by Survivor Andy. And it's just really cool POIs that can sprinkle around throughout the wilderness. And the reason I like these is because the wilderness can be kind of bare. And I don't always like seeing houses and stuff like that. Sometimes I like seeing little stuff like this. It's like, you know, a little sign here that says camping rest area. And sure, there's not a whole heck of a lot of stuff here. You know, some, some little... Um, benches some trash and stuff like that looks like a place where somebody might have set up a campground but it has a little road connecting to it. it's kind of a little out of the way thing as you're you know just wandering around something to run into and find but then also if we come up here to teleporter or to the poi teleporter there's up to four that we can select and they're all different i'm actually gonna go ahead and go god mode just so i can like here's the first one that's in the pack See, look at this. It's actually kind of neat. And if you don't have a lot of POIs and stuff in your folder, when you put this in and you spawn a new world, you can have a chance of having a lot of these spawn just randomly around. And it's just cool little things to, to find while you're out and about exploring. At least to me it is. You know, you take a cross-country trip and you're like, oh, hey, what is this? You know, just something cool. Not a whole lot that, you know, is going to rock your world. But hey, at least just something a little interesting. But with that, we're going to go ahead and move over to the next mod. Alright folks, so this next mod is the Stun Spear by Azuki slash Shadowless Tomorrow, and it's just a sweet little weapon that basically does what the Stun Baton does, but for a spear, and it's a little bit more later game, so it's going to do more damage and stuff like that. So how you can unlock it is through the Electrocutioner and Javelin Master perks, um... And as you see here, it just says the still spirit wired to give zombies quite a shock. This one has a power attack that stabs even harder instead of thrown and spreads the shock effects. So it's super easy to make just one still spear, some still spear parts, electrical parts, duct tape, and a wire tool. And we got some zombies over here. We're going to test it out on. And as you attack with it, the more you attack with it, you see how it's starting to glow now? There you go. It's going to charge up the stun and spread it out. Now we can get these guys following us. And the power attack can spread the stun a little bit more if they're grouped up. But now we're out of stamina. And of course, you know, it being a spear has pretty decent damage. Because, well, you know, it's also a steel weapon. But all in all, it's a pretty good weapon to use. If you've got, you know, a bunch of zombies and stuff around you, or if you just want something that's slightly different than normal. I like this. I like the idea of this, especially if you're going with, like, a melee-only kind of playthrough. Stun Baton doesn't really hold up past, like, day 30-ish. So if you add this to it, or, you know, if you add this to your playthrough, you can actually go, you know, spear and bow, stuff like that, and have an alternate kind of play style and still have some good utility out of this thing. At least I've managed to get some good utility out of it, just playing around with it as much as I have. And I've loved this mod. So thank you, Azuki. It's really cool. But with that, folks, we're going to go ahead and move over to the next mod. All right, folks. So this next mod is the Sprinting Shoes by Nick. And it's a small mod that takes the normal running shoes and makes them slightly better. So if we look at these, you get... Stamina regen plus running speed, 20%. But you also don't have any ankle support. So if you drop off of a five-foot block with these... Why did I put those down there as opposed to equipping them? Where? So I'm going to go ahead and take out God Mode. You see, we run a little bit faster than normal. Stamina doesn't quite drain as fast. But if we jump up here... So this is four blocks. That's sprained leg, right? Go God Mode real quick. Take it out. So I have five. Look at that. Back into God Mode to heal it. You see how there's a trade-off for this? We can fall three, or two, I mean, and we're okay. Three, we're okay. You hit that fourth block, though. Boom. 
that's why I like this mod. It adds a little bit more realism in with like the normal running shoes and stuff. But also, I just like the ability to run a little bit extra faster, have a little bit better stamina region and or drain. I mean, it's just all in all, it's a little bit better. And if you put points into parkour and stuff, it makes it even better because then you don't have to worry about the fall. And it actually makes parkour fit a little bit better, I think, with like terms of running, jumping and doing stuff like this. It's a small mod, like I said, but to me, it's a fantastic little mod that just adds a slight niche to my gameplay that I, you know, haven't really been able to deal without since I learned of this mod. With that, folks, we're going to go ahead and move over to the next mod. All right, folks, so this next mod is the Rings of Potential by Bladestorm Games, and this is a fantastic mod that adds in a butt ton of items to the game that can really fit slight different niches or just completely change how you do everything, and they're fun as crap to play with. Now, unfortunately, because of the assets used, it's not server-side. You actually have to have these installed on the client side as well, but they are so fun. So this is just the Ring of Agony. You see, it drops your max health, but you get increased melee damage, increased rain damage, and increased attack speed. And these all go inside of gloves. We have a ring of inspiration, health bonus for allies, allies deal more damage, attack speed for allies, ring of life essence, max health, when hit, gain health over time, ring of uh, mechanism, robot sledge, in hand damage, robot damage, robot attack speed, ring of the predator. Like, there's so much rings here, like, it could really take a long time going through all of these. But it's just so cool to have these that I, I, since I found this, I've had so much fun playing with these because there's so much stuff that you can do. Like, there's a venom one, so you poison enemies, there's extra block damage. So, like, this is especially good for, like, mining and stuff like that, uh, busting through doors, just any normal little activity where you're going to be busting blocks and stuff. This is fantastic. The Ring of Reborn, so if you die, you come back. Ring of Force, Knockback Force, Ring of the Face Breaker, Dragon Roar. Like, there's just so much stuff here going over and trying to show every single one of these. is just ridiculous. But they can really make or break how you play. And there's even a vampires, uh, Vampirism one. Uh, let's find... Let's just type... Vamp. Which... Life Leech. Like, that's really cool that you can have these. And you see, like, there's different little versions that you can find out and about while you're looting. Oop, wrong button. And you can actually craft these, too. See, you can craft the Ring of Beginning, Broken Glass. Most of these you're going to find looting or buy them from the traders. That's where I've gotten all mine from, was from the traders. But they're just so fun to play around with. Like, just... Slotting them in different ones, doing different stuff. You can even have, uh, show you guys. You can even have different sets of gloves for different. Why did I? Oh well. But you can have different sets of gloves doing different things, and you can tweak where you can have three of one type, you know, or three of different kinds of rings in there for different stuff. Like you know, ones that are strictly for just going out and fighting in a horde. You know, just it's so fun being able to play with this. I love the way that they've done this mod. It's just, it's been so fun for me. But with that, folks, we're going to go ahead and move over to the last mod. All right, folks. So this last mod is the Wizard's Tower POI by Evil Mirth. And it is a super cool POI. I will say, however, it is a pain in the butt to get it to spawn on a map. I've only ever managed to get one at a time to spawn on a map. I've never had more than that. But it is still a cool POI. And... If you're one of those people who doesn't like building a base, you just rather find a POI, move in there, and let it be your horde base and stuff like that, this is perfect for you. Because, you see, we walk up the steps there, and you know what, we're just gonna go around these guys, but then you follow the path up this way, you follow the path here, follow the path around, up, around, through, and then boom, here you go. So. Why I like this is, one, you can actually get rid of that door, or you can put down um, the hatches here to fight through, but you can put a junk sledge here to knock zombies off as they path up, and it's going to take them a while on a horde night to path through this, and you can have a sledge there knocking them down. You can set up turrets and stuff over here shooting them. You can set bar or not barbed wire. You can set electrical fence shocking them, so you can sit there and shooty, shooty, shoot, shoot, shoot. 
You can do all kinds of stuff like that. You can set turrets up here to shoot birds, turrets over here for birds, stuff like that. But it is a very functional base that is very small. Like, yeah, it's got some damage stuff here, but you can easily replace these with all of the working stuff that you need. You have a little couchy area, a little bed area, safe, storage, plenty of storage. Cool way to look up. You have all this stuff out here that you can use for a gyrocopter. You could even expand this a little bit if you're not as, you know, talented as I'm not <laughs> at flying a gyrocopter for being able to take off and land and stuff. Just, all in all, this is a very well done little POI place that you can turn into a very functional horde base. And you see there's even more down here and you can use this, you know, bust through the concrete and stuff and create a little mining place down through here. I wouldn't personally do that. Like if I were, I would go at an angle this way and dig through like that. I wouldn't actually dig underneath the base, but it's fairly thick of concrete blocks. So zombies aren't going to bust through easily to get to you. Zombies are going to take the path of least resistance and they're going to follow around this way and come up through here to try to get to you, especially like on a horde night. They're not just going to bust through. They're going to come this way. It, it's worked for me in the past a lot. I actually love this layout, how they've done this. And you could even narrow these um, blocks down and make it to where it's slightly pushed away from the wall here to where there's not going to actually be damaging the wall at all and just follow a path. And you can put little um, railings here and they'll hit the railings and they'll jump off and land on the ground down below and then turn and run back around. But there's always the chance if you do that, that they'll come and try to damage those blocks. But all in all, in terms of like functionality of a POI to base, this is one of the best that I have seen, if not flat out the best. And like I said, for Horde Knights, I had this one up to day, I want to say it was day 70, I think. This is the, the highest I managed to get with this one. And that was me literally just speeding the days forward. Um, running around killing just ridiculous amounts of zombies, getting my game stage up to max. And I think it was day 70, and I had zero problems with a sledge turret there um, and me just literally just standing here as zombies were coming up. There was a sledge turret there. I think I put a sledge turret here too because I had two of them. And it was literally just shoot, 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 get them knocked off, shoot, 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 get them knocked off. I had no problems with it. The birds were taken out by turrets up top. I had so much fun with this. Like, this is a very well done POI slash base. But with that, folks, we are done for the week. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you had fun. If you liked the episode, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe if you aren't. But have fun, folks. Take it easy. And we will see you next time. Bye.